All righty, and it looks like we are live. Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, July 4th to everybody in America. It's happy 4th of July to you. Um, and today we have just a couple of things to go over. Uh, the first one comes out from France. Uh, if anyone has heard of the Cannes Film Fest Festival, uh, the next one comes from a company called Pizza Hut. Um, they have been doing a lot of things um, that I actually didn't know myself, so it was kind of interesting to kind of um, research their achievements over the past couple of years, especially when it comes to uh, the digital space. And then also uh, I want to go over something called, or what I like to call the word of the week. Uh, there are a lot of terms that are going around inside this digital space. Uh, as we enter in this digital world, I feel like we all need to come to a certain understanding of what these things are. Um, so just want to every week go over one, maybe two um, terms is kind of build your knowledge base a little bit. Um, and get you well informed for uh, what is to come. So before we get started, let's take a brief break and then we'll jump right into it. All right, so as I've mentioned, the first one comes straight out of France. Uh, as I mentioned, if you've heard of the Cannes Film Festival that actually started, I think started way back in 1947, uh, in the 40s at some point, um, and it's from, um, I think it's, I think it's annually. I think it's from, um, the summertime, June or something like that. Uh, so I think we might've just missed it. I had to do a little bit of diggings for that. Um, but also if you haven't heard, which I actually didn't hear about until maybe just a little while ago, there's something called the cons, uh, international creativity festival. Um, and basically they just kind of award all of the creative marketers, advertisers, and stuff like that uh, for their achievements. And this year, it looks like they are bringing in uh, some AR technology to that festival, the Cannes Lions International Film Festival, or sorry, International Creativity Festival. Um, this actually started back in 1954. So again, uh, I'm kind of new to the scene as I've only been uh, keeping up with it the past couple of years. Um, but from what I hear, it is actually a really good event, really good festival to actually visit uh, if you're ever in France <laughs> during that time. Um, so it looks like they, at the festival, they actually added in some augmented reality um, from a company called Niantic. I've been uh, hearing a lot about Niantic in the recent days, especially when they acquired 8th Wall Technology uh, to basically allow people to not have a actual application downloaded on their phone when it comes to uh, augmented technology uh, but you can actually do it straight through the web browser uh, so there is no need for any third-party application or anything so if you're a developer um, and you want to check into eighth wall technology or even niantic uh, they would be definitely be a good start if you're creating some um, new ar applications a ar games ar you know whatever have you um, Let's see. Yeah, I think the uh, I would say the biggest thing about this is just, you know, as we enter into this digital age, there's going to be a lot of new um, use cases for augmented reality, uh, a lot of new use cases for virtual reality. So I think they're I think they're on the right path. A lot of companies will be um, taking on this route. And it's, I'm really happy to see that they are jumping into this. Um, as like I said, it's between Niantic and 8th Wall. Um, and, oh, okay, so yeah, it just ran June 20th to June 23rd um, in Cannes, France. And then the, um, uh, the second thing was actually from the Cannes um, Metaverse. So as you all know, the Metaverse uh, has been a really big thing um, in the past year, really 2021. Um, and a lot of companies are trying to develop their own style of the metaverse or their own metaverse and what have you. Um, so Cons is actually partnering up with a couple of companies, uh, one of them being Facebook, AKA Meta, and then the other one being a company called Journey, in which if you haven't heard of Journey, they are just a company in which you can essentially hire them to do some of your like metaverse um, stuff so they can build you an actual virtual space uh, for your brand for your company um, and it actually will look really cool which you'll jump into the uh, cons metaverse here shortly 
But as you can see here in the, in the background, there's a lot of stuff that they can do uh, for you, for your company, as far as like branding inside of the metaverse. Uh, so definitely go ahead and check out this company. And then in the meantime, I want to check out MWverse. Um, I'm not really sure. I think MW just stands for McCann World Group. Um, again, this is by Journey and also by Meta. Um, and it's kind of a part of the cons festival that but they're just jumping into uh, the metaverse here uh, so I just want to show you show you guys what it looks like and this is completely all within the web browser you don't need any virtual technology uh, virtual reality headset or anything like that for it first time I actually tried it it was using my um, actually let me lower that down a little bit uh, first time I actually tried it was using my cell phone I did it straight from my cell phone I just had to turn it from portrait to landscape and everything worked out fine um, it was not buggy at all. It was really it was actually really smooth as far as the um, uh, as far as the movement and everything goes. Um, so let me see. Looks like it's not jumping on here. I don't see anything. This may be one where I have to actually do it from myself. I'm not sure. I mean, the desktop version should be working, but we'll see. Let me just refresh this page, hit enter. Sometimes even the metaverse, we run out of space. Don't refresh your browser or you'll go to the end of the queue. You'll be, oh, oops. All right, so I'm just gonna let this sit here for a while whilst we keep trucking right along. Um, and you know, maybe by the end of this video, we'll be able to kind of show you what this, um, what this metaverse looks like here. So the next thing that comes up will be this Pizza Hut company. Uh, like I said, Pizza Hut has been doing a whole lot of stuff inside of this digital world that we're in. Um, it was actually kind of interesting to research them and see what they actually have been doing. Uh, and I think it's actually all pretty cool. I think they are one of, I'm gonna say, the, the <laughs> pioneer pizza companies or whatever. Uh, I think it was, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was Domino's Pizza that actually accepted the first Bitcoin. Uh, so you never know. Pizza Hut might be next for accepting Bitcoin here. Um, but the one thing that they are doing is a scratch and sniff menu. Again, this is pretty old. This is in 2015 when this video came out. It said coming soon. I'm not sure if it actually did come out. I, I haven't spent much time at Pizza Hut myself. But apparently you can actually do test out a... Um, So yeah, so there's a little brief snippet there of that video. You guys can check out the full video um, a little bit later on. I'm dropping all the links to all of these wonderful articles here inside of the description for this video. Uh, but the next one would be a actual digital menu for Pizza Hut as well. Uh, this one was viewed in 2017. So again, a little bit of a while ago, but not that long. Oh, hello there. Welcome to Pizza Hut Digital Menu. I'm Michelle Fubon, your host today. If you don't try, you don't know what you're missing. Part of the meal. This one's fully loaded. Now, the only thing I'm wondering about this, although it is pretty cool to bring in AR technology uh, into the restaurant business, is that I'm not sure if you're going to have to have your own uh, cellular device or tablet. This uh, video, they show them having a tablet. Uh, I know a lot of people carry around their devices with them, but you know. Uh, what if you're at a table with a family of eight or something like that? You got a whole bunch of children. Um, you know, what exactly happens? Is there a tablet for everybody or is it just one tablet? Um, so, you know, there is a couple of little kinks to work out there. Um, but like I said, the technology is, is available. It's pretty cool. 
um, and it's only a matter of time until we can figure out exactly what we can uh, achieve with it. And then the last one from Pizza Hut again will be that they have this interactive table. This one actually came out in 2014, so this was the earlier one. Um, but they have an interactive table in which you can actually create your own pizza. So the only thing that I would say about this is that it's a scary time for waitresses and waiters because, um, yeah, <laughs> it looks like they are no longer in, in need. Uh, I know there's a lot of kind of restaurants out there as well that already actually um, send your food directly from the kitchen to your table using some sort of conveyor belt and robotic system. Um, so once you're able to use an interactive table to order your food, once you're able to use a digital menu to order your food um, there is no interaction with any human being at all and then you can get your pizza delivered to you directly to your table uh, by a robot it's gonna be a hard time for the waiters and waitresses out there um, they essentially will not <laughs> be of use anymore um, so and again technology is really cool um, but we have to find a way to balance it out to find a way to uh, make it work for our needs uh, as well as not you know end us all for say um all right so last thing again is actually the word of the week word of the week today is a crypto winter um there's a lot of reports that have been going around in the past i don't know six months to eight months it actually started back in 2021 uh where the cryptocurrency market took a really big downturn I think Bitcoin now is down 75% of its um, all-time high value. Uh, it was like 60 or 70K, something close to that. Um, and now it's only, I think it's even less than 20K. Now I haven't checked it today. Um, I think it's still below 20K. Um, so what is a crypto winter? So if you're used to investing, and again, this is no investment um, advice or financial advice. This is just kind of, letting you guys know what this word means in case you do hear it if you in case you do want to get into the cryptocurrency um, investment platform uh, or even the stock platform as well um, you just want to make sure that you're aware of what this actually means um, as right now we are going through a nice crypto winter uh, aka a bear market in uh, stock terms so a crypto winter is just when the cryptocurrency market is uh, performing poorly um, a crypto winter signifies negative sentiment and lower average asset values among a large swath of digital currencies. Uh, research shows that crypto winners have a major impact on investor mentality. Looking at the cryptocurrency price history, it's sometimes easy to spot a crypto winter because the downturn may come with a double digit uh, percentage drop in crypto values. So I'm just going to read the key takeaways for this. A crypto winter they say cryptocurrency winter is a period of lower cryptocurrency prices. Uh, cryptocurrency markets can follow patterns similar to those of the stock markets uh, with up and down cycles. And then lastly, cryptocurrencies are a relatively new asset class and it's possible that prices will never recover from a crypto winter. Um, that one I don't really agree with as we all have seen Bitcoin back in 2018 was down I don't know, 80, 85% or something like that in 2018. Um, and then, I mean, man, it just kind of exploded afterwards. Um, so I'm no financial guru or anything like that. Uh, I'm just giving you my honest opinion. I think after this crypto winter, Bitcoin will um, actually increase in value. 
uh, just as well as all of the other, you know, um, cryptocurrency assets that are out there as well. Um, to me right now, this just means that we are getting a nice deal on all of the different cryptocurrencies uh, as an investor standpoint. Um, so it'll be, in my opinion, a great time to jump in, um, get as much as you can because everything is pretty much just on sale. You can, you can get it at a discounted price because uh, the value of it, I'm a firm believer that it will actually go back up. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, I definitely understand. Um, but just remember in 2018, Bitcoin price was around 3K, 4K, something like that. And then a couple years later, it exploded to about 60K. So I'll leave that there. Uh, let's check and see if this uh, MW verse is now jumping in. Uh, I know my. All right, nice. So as you can see here, it's asking me, who am I? I'm just going to put my name, Mr. Junior. Um, it's giving me a couple of avatars to choose from. You can kind of see it here. Um, they have the big head ha avatar, the hacker avatar, and then custom. Uh, I believe this custom one comes from a company called Ready Player Me. I'll do a whole spiel on Ready Player Me uh, in a later show, but Ready Player Me is actually a really big avatar uh, provider for the metaverse world. Uh, I'm going to do green because that's my favorite color, and I'm just going to switch this back to big head. Or don't want to, uh, I might have it. I played around with this a couple times before. I think I might want it like bluish purple this time. I want to do that. And then we just go ahead and hit enter. Um, it's going to tell us how to move. We can use a keyboard. I'm on a laptop, so I don't have a mouse. Uh, so I'm just going to use my ASWD keys. Hit skip on that. You guys can go ahead and play with this as well yourself. Skip on that. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't really need that either. Um, I don't think my avatar is uploaded yet and ready. All right, guys. So it doesn't look to be working on the uh, web browser side. So I'm going to just switch over to my cell phone to do it. All right, so as you can see here, I am actually in the MW-verse, uh, just on the mobile side. You got the same options here to add in your name, um, change your avatar, change the avatar colors. This time around, uh, instead of the big head, I just went with the hacker. Uh, and once you press enter, you can go ahead in and um, basically use their metaverse. So once you do that, you have to rotate your screen into the uh, landscape mode, and then you are ready and good to go. So it looks like I am in here. Um, as you can see, I have my avatar here. Um, I'm on my cell phone as well as on my laptop computer. I just want to move here. Let's move there. And as you can see, I have my one on my computer as well, Junior. Um, that's there. So it is available. It is interactive, it looks like, um, to where you can see other people on it. Uh, for some reason, I can't see it on my laptop, but when I press the W key on my laptop, I can actually move forward in here. So this is um, this is really strange. When I did it on my cell phone, it actually like you know came up right away. Um, but as I said, this is really it's really smooth. It's really responsive. Um, let me see if I can move. Uh, I don't want to explore any portals yet, but these are different portals. That's for Cigna. That's for L'Oreal. Uh, we have a portal over here for. Xbox, um, Late Tam Technologies, uh, looks like Chevrolet has a portal over there. Bunch of them portals, Verizon, Subway, MasterCard, Black and the Board. Um, so yeah, so all of these are different portals you can jump into inside the metaverse. And again, I'm just directly on my cellular device and um, it looks like I'm, I'm on it on my laptop as also, but for whatever reason, it's not working that well. And you can actually see a whole bunch of other people that are uh, moving around me as well. So you can see that person there moving around. Uh, so there's other members inside of this metaverse. 
Uh, there are people out here just checking it out. Uh, I'm gonna jump into, let's say I'm gonna jump into this, uh, this one here, the subway. Continue, continue, there we go. And there we are. So as soon as you jump in, it's actually really quick. Um, oh, it looks like this one, they let you fly. Oh, nice. So they actually let you fly in this one. Um, and again, it's just a place for people to kind of go interact. Hi, I'm Tony Kalita, one of the creative directors sure on host, Signature Sam. Uh, events and stuff like that. I mean, this is actually really nice that you get to fly in here. Hey, uh, I'm Tony Kalita, playing. one of the creative directors on Verizon uh, Fortnite Stadium. Now, Super Bowl is a really big deal for most brands, and that's definitely true for Verizon. Every year, they want to be the biggest, they want to be the coolest thing at the Super Bowl. Bowl, and every year kind they go bigger the and they go better. So in 2021 rolled around and, and they told but, us that we couldn't uh, activate live on, this on the ground in Tampa. That was a really into, big deal. So we Chevrolet. decided that we needed to pivot. Now we're back walking and you see how quick that was just to jump into there. Uh, this is actually a really nice journey. Did a really good job on this. Um, and as soon as I walk up to the screen, it starts to play the video. I am Brad Emmett. I am a um, co-chief creative officer of McCann <laughs> Detroit. And I'm Chuck Meehan, the other co so, yeah, CCO of McCann Detroit. Room over here. I didn't check Thanks out for being with one. us. I checked out We're the, uh, the L'Oreal and uh, L'Oreal and uh, the Black and the Board, Black and the Broad one earlier today. So I didn't check this one out. I got another video here. Oh yeah, it's Chevrolet has Hola, a nice soy Arturo Velázquez, director creativo de señales del Más Allá. Un proyecto lleno de tradición y cultura que aprovecha la data y te Laptop, okay. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and like play around with this a little bit more here. Um, Latem Airlines, uh, of course, they're gonna do like a cockpit style metaverse. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Jose yeah, so Sosa like and I am here well. with my creative partner, Leo Giesi. Hey everyone, sure if I can along here. with a great team of bright creatives oh, yeah, and strategists, yeah. we brought to life this Flyover Cyber Monday campaign for Latam Airlines. One of the most interesting things about this campaign was the fact that this idea didn't actually come directly from a specific creative brief. We were engaging in some conversations with our client partners at Latam Airlines about how, during Cyber Monday, airlines compete not only with other airlines, but with the whole retail industry. During this time of the year, everyone in South America is hunting. Here's one for Xbox. Um, okay, I did a screen over there. Let's see if I can go to that screen and see what happens. Hi, I'm Brad Myers, a creative director at 215 McCann, and welcome to Halo Become. When we started this project, we wanted to really think about the rich history of Halo and the rich history of Halo advertising. Almost 15 years ago, one of the most famous Halo campaigns ever was created at McCann, and it was called Believe. And for that campaign, it was... So yeah, I'm definitely interested uh, what you all think about this. Um, it's actually really, really interesting to see this metaverse work so very well. Um, and this is, you know, this is kind of just the the nature of. I can actually turn that off there. And yeah, so this is kind of just the nature of what the metaverse can offer, what the metaverse holds for uh, our digital future. Um, I'm going to be going through pretty much every day touching base on all of this new technology because uh, there's a lot of stuff that people don't even realize or don't even know about I'm going day to day letting this digital experience just pass them over and it's really just mind-blowing uh, how much it has grown so um, with that being said I wish you all a wonderful uh, 4th of July and then I will check back with you all tomorrow